Vancouver's Granville Island Market. A salmon lover's dreamscape. There's the two kinds, the sockeye and spring. From Atlantic to coho, sockeye and chinook, consumers are spoiled for choice. Wild salmon, farm salmon, and maybe someday, transgenic salmon. In a lab near St. John's, Newfoundland, a team of scientists led by Dr. Garth Fletcher of Memorial University spent years experimenting with the genes of fish. And in 1989, they created what nature has not, a salmon that grows faster than any in the sea. Is there an ethical question there? It's just another method of producing food because you have a growing population. Just how profound do you think this science that you've discovered could be? The world's your oyster. It really is. I mean, I mean, the, the, this technology is here to stay. That the transgenic salmon should emerge from a lab here in Newfoundland will strike some as a cosmic irony. This is, after all, the province where science and industry came together in the 90s and destroyed the commercial cod stocks. And yet, now science and industry have come together, cracked the genetic code, and may have produced a fish protein to feed a hungry world long after the planet's oceans are fished out. The science takes a gene from a Chinook salmon and another from an eel called an ocean pout. Both are injected into the egg of an Atlantic salmon and the result rewrites the animal's DNA. Instead of just growing for a matter of months, it grows year round, voraciously eating its way to market size twice as fast as farmed fish. The results are startling. Engineered fish are double the size of untreated fish of the same age and they cost less to feed. People like the ones that look after the fish and raise the fish. The American Aqua Bounty Company smelled opportunity. It bought in early on. Garth Fletcher is now a company director, but it has yet to satisfy American Food and Drug Administration concerns about some key questions. How safe do you think this product is for people to eat, for the environment it's going to be introduced to? I'm 100% confident of what the approval process is now. The, 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 the risk is as minimum as you could ever expect to get with any product. I need to ask you, have you ever eaten this fish? Yes, of course. You have? Yeah, yeah, many times, because of course we have a lot, lot of fish. Aquabounty is the company seeking FDA approval to sell the fish, and for 17 years it's produced science suggesting they're safe to eat and no threat to the environment, with the eggs created in a landlocked lab in Prince Edward Island, then flown to tanks in Panama to grow to market size. If approved, the meat will be flown to the U.S. market. No live transgenic salmon would ever touch American water. The FDA has so far issued two favorable preliminary rulings, declaring the fish would not have significant effect on the quality of the environment and is safe to eat. But 17 years into a process that's got Aquabounty scrambling for financial survival, the FDA is insisting on more research. We're not discounting uh, people's concerns. But as I said, the fundamental issue here is either the food is the same or it's not. And if it's the same, then how can you distinguish it from the traditional food? The Canadian government is not exactly a stranger to the gene science that's been going on in its own backyard since the 80s. In fact, it's been raising genetically modified salmon of its own for years here in West Vancouver, trying to stay on top of the science, knowing that someday it's probably going to face the same questions the Americans are wrestling with right now. These things don't go after each other as long as there's enough food supply. But Dr. Robert Devlin's an authority on genetically engineered salmon. He's created a strain of his own for the federal government. Not the one before the FDA, but any fish juiced on growth hormone, he says, has the same peculiar behaviors. On the left, we have wild type fish, and if you'd like to just put a little bit of food into that tank, you should see that they are interested in food to some degree, but they're also very concerned about your presence. In other words, they're very predator wary. In contrast to that, on the right here, we have the genetically engineered versions. These are the same age, brothers and sisters. If you put a little bit of food in that tank, you should be able to see that they have had their feeding behavior dramatically transformed. These animals are highly focused wow. on acquiring food, but they're also much less concerned about our presence. So their predator wariness has been reduced to a very strong extent. Most fish aren't afraid of me. No, they're not. <laughs>
No one's applied for permission to market a fish like this in Canada, so why does Canada need to know the science? It became clear very early on that we needed to understand what kind of risks those animals uh, may pose to the natural environment should they ever uh, inadvertently escape into, into the wild. And once a transgenic fish enters into nature, there's very little you can do about it. So what do we know for sure about this fish? So we, we have some data that supports the, res the application of this kind of technology and some that suggests there's high uncertainties. The FDA has issued a preliminary report suggesting that this is going to be safe for human consumption. I asked Dr. Fletcher, does he eat his salmon? He says he does. Do you eat yours? No, uh, we've, never, uh, we've never eaten a transgenic fish and uh, the main reason for that is that we've had no uh, food safety assessment uh, done on them. Yeah. And these are our And these are our, our, our wild friends, yeah, the coho and the, the sockeye. These and are the two. Browsing the bounty of Vancouver's Granville Market, environmentalist Jay Richland says there are other reasons to be skeptical. My biggest concern about this is that genetically modified salmon is a solution that we don't need to a problem that we don't really have. What do you mean? Well, farm salmon is produced all over the world at a commodity scale. There's lots of it. Uh, these are sockeye salmon. At a counter nearby, Scott Moorhead ices down the silver sides of prize fish for his discerning clientele. He's been in the business 30 years, beginning as a boy with his fisherman father. If that were a genetically engineered salmon, yep. would that sell? Not at my store. We don't carry, we don't even carry any farm salmon at our shop. We, we strict, stick strictly to wild salmon, uh, commercially caught in British Columbia or Alaska. If you said genetically engineered salmon to your customers, what would they say to you? <laughs> they, they just laugh. They, uh, we wouldn't sell a single piece of it if I told it, said that to anybody. As for consumers... I know that it's made from a salmon and an eel, but beyond that, I don't know if it's safe to eat or what the effects are from it. So the idea that they're going to combine the genes of one or more fish to make a brand new fish, that's good with you? Yeah, I have no problem with that. I'm sure one day they'll be growing just meat cells on your kitchen counter and you'll be able to eat it. <laughs> Who knows? The fish in the net are non-transgenic or wild-type coho salmon at one year of age. Two, three inches long. Right. In the tank, we have their brothers and sisters that are genetically engineered. The transgenic salmon's undergone years of review. It may face more, leading some to suggest it's the fear of political backlash, not the science, that's weighing on the American process now. First time we had a look at them when they were... The U.S. is the first to wrestle with this idea. It won't be the last, says the Canadian who cracked the genetic code. Every country in the world is looking at these technologies to see where the areas where they wish to improve the production of their, of their livestock, whether it be cattle, sheep, chickens, fish, and they're doing it. They just haven't taken it to a regulatory level yet because it, it's complicated and, and expensive. And just as these transgenic salmon dwarf the wild ones of the very same age, the world will soon have to weigh the economics of size against concerns about science. For The National, I'm Rick McInnes-Ray in Vancouver.